Eclipse. Yesterday, we discussed the correct way to use Eclipse glasses. You can find that story over at KATV.com. But what if you don't have any Eclipse glasses? Well, you're not out of luck. You can use a pinhole projector to view it. Joining me today, Dr. Ashley Hicks with the Arkansas School for Mathematics, Sciences, and the Arts, and Ivy Monroe, a senior there, and the president of the Astronomy Club. They're going to show us how to make a pinhole projector ourselves. Welcome to both of you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks yeah. for being here. I've already learned a little bit uh, <laughs> just in visiting with you, but let's start off with what is a pinhole projector and how does it work? So a pinhole projector, it takes the sun's image and it reflects it. It goes through the hole and then it reflects onto the back of this. Okay. And then you'll be able to see the sun as it goes through the goes from um, sh fully shown to totality to non-shown. Okay. And safely, because you have your your back against the sun, and you'll be able to safely view it without having to go a 60 degree angle towards the sun. Wow, okay. And this is something we can make at home, right? For sure. Okay, Absolutely. so let's talk about how we do that. Yeah. All right. So first thing first, you would want to get a piece of paper. Okay. You have some right here. And these are all things that most people have in their homes mm -hmm. already, 100%. right? 100%. Yeah. Super accessible, we can recycle. Yeah. And then so you want to have one piece of paper on the bottom. Mm -hmm. You can measure it out like that and then just cut it out. Okay. And then stick it at the bottom of this on the inside. You Got can it. glue it or tape it up to your own. Up to your own. Kind of, and okay. then second step would be cutting off all the flaps except for this middle part right here. Okay. Yes. We have the finished product right there. Absolutely. So cut it off here. Sorry. It's all right. Here. And then what I like to do is just cut them down here, mm -hmm. here, just in case there's not any indents. And so then if you fast forward, this mm -hmm. is what it will look like, yes. right? So the frosted you, flakes one right there. Yes, it'll be cut in like so. Okay. And then the next step is going to be to reinforce, basically make the box back. So okay. we've torn the box apart, we've put the paper in, put the box back together, and we can do that with some tape, or we did some in the office with staples okay. um, to kind of make the, the middle portions stick together. stick together again, exactly right. And so once we've done that here, if you want to take that one, what do we do next? All right, so you want to take a piece of aluminum foil, easy thing you can find at home, put it over, then it doesn't have to be pretty or anything, it just needs to be on top. Right. And then you take a piece of tape and then reinforce the aluminum foil. Make sure it's tight. One more on the top there. Yep, and get all sides of it. All right, and okay. then this far side. Perfect. All right, and then one last step. You take anything that's sharp, like a thumbtack will do. Just poke a hole. A tiny, tiny hole. Yes, tiny the hole. tinier the hole, the better. And okay. if, you, if you have young kids, one of the things that can be fun to do um, is maybe make a couple different versions with different size holes and have mm -hmm. them see how the image changes because sure. you will see a difference. And if they want to get extra fancy, you could even decorate the outside. With Absolutely, yes. yeah. Construction paper yeah. or something. That'd anyway, be so you can fun. tell them I'm a mom of young kids. Right? <laughs> so when you have this made, at, and the eclipse is about to happen. How do we use this? You mentioned turning your back to the sun. Is yes. that right? So the goal is to get the sun, the sun's rays through this tiny hole. Okay. So you put your back directly against the sun and then slowly line it up to see where you can see a small dot at the very back of the box. So you're looking through the bottom hole. Yes. Yeah. And then so you'll see the sun through this hole and you'll see it will go through totality. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so neat, yeah. especially for kids, like getting in on a project like this, yeah. I think would be really interesting for them. It's a great science project. Are there any other methods for creating a pinhole projector like this? Yes, there are several ways. There, are, this, As long as you have a small like hole, like if, think of it like a camera. You can take a... Um, like a colander a or colander, a cheese grater. Cheese grater. Um, Anything with small holes, like a strainer even, right. put it up against the sun and you would be able to see it. Even if you have like a bunch of small leaves on a tree, you can see it go throughout the uh, phrase of totality. And, and you say that's just a really good way to view the eclipse. Why, yes. why is it such a great way? 
first of all, safety is like, our, like number one. Mm -hmm. So making sure people are safe with their retinas and eyes, make sure everything is safe, especially if they're younger kids and they have to have bigger glasses, so therefore there's no chance that they'll be looking at the sun. Right. The Put your back's to the sun the whole time, whether you're looking through the box or you've got your strainer. Um, you can even make a little pinhole with your hands mm -hmm. and project onto the ground, but um, back to the sun the whole time, there's less chance of looking up and, and damaging your eyes. Yeah, so maybe mm -hmm. even more safe than the eclipse glasses. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So talk about some of the ways that the school is preparing for the eclipse. Yeah, so in the outreach department, we've spent the past year doing a lot of educator development, mm -hmm. getting our teachers ready to educate their students about the eclipse, some community events to educate the community, and I've done field trips with classes where we learn about the phases of the moon and what an eclipse means, and there's been a lot of really cool stuff going on on campus, too, with Astronomy Club. And, and our student uh, scientists. Astronomy Club has been preparing like for this for a long time. With the partial eclipse that happened earlier this year, we practiced safety with our with our goggles, and also we t um, made a solar filter with our um, telescopes. Wow. Um, our school is also doing taking uh, data for NASA mm -hmm. and through iNaturalista showcase what's happening during the eclipse. Yeah. And we also have a lot of events happening this weekend to keep students excited for the eclipse. Yeah, and you've got to be, as the president of the Astronomy Club, you just have to be pumped about this. I'm so ready. <laughs> You're so excited, <laughs> yeah. so cool. Well, if people want to learn more about the school, how do they do that? Absolutely, so they're welcome to visit us online, uh, asmsa.org. They can reach out to our outreach office at any time. Um, you'll find all the information on our website. Okay, Dr. Hicks, Ivy, thanks so much for being with with us today. We appreciate it. We learned a little something from Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. We'll be uh, looking to hear about how Eclipse Day goes for you guys there. <laughs> Thank so you much. for having us. All right. Thanks.